So I've actually had to rename this series again to how to create a web page in less than 45 minutes now as opposed to 30 minutes and I'd originally started with 10 and it's probably more because I'm talking through so much as I go through it. I still maintain that you could build what I'm showing you here in less than 10 minutes but for the sake of accuracy on my titles I have now changed it to how to build a web page in 45 minutes because this is the third part of three and hopefully the total video length will be 45 minutes or under meaning i have about 12 minutes left for this clip so look in the last um in the last two parts we built out this home landing page here and then we also built the guides page which is the starting point before people click on on a blog post to then read that blog post and if we click on that at the moment you'll see there's nothing there so i'm going to show you now the next part or the last part to build out um, a, a list details page okay so if we come back into softer um, all that I did following the end of part one and part two is I've been hitting this publish button here and that lets you publish your um, your website. It'll, it'll assign a domain name for you until you actually link your custom domain name. And actually I've said there's only three parts in this video. I might do a part four to show you how to do that custom domain thing. But I think some people will find that interesting how to do that. Okay, so look, you just hit publish there and then that gives you your, your domain for the time being so you can actually see what it looks like as you're, as you're, as you're building it, you know. Um, okay, anyway, let's go back, get back to this because I'm running out of time. Okay, so effectively at the moment I have this to link to the guides detail page and if you remember from part one we've already built the, the guides detail page here, right, in, in our structure. We now have to tell it what information to show when somebody is linked to the guides detail page, okay. So if you get my face out of the way there, you will see there is a block down here called list details. So for any of your, I suppose, drill in pages where you're trying to just show the information from one particular record, one row in your Airtable base, um, it's a list details page that you're going to want to show. So a list details page is the page that shows when somebody clicks on an item in your actual list page, if that makes sense. So list details, right? So this is a blog post type thing. So I probably wanted to look something similar to this one here with the, the large type image and the heading and everything else. We've already connected our Airtable base in part two of this uh, series. And I show you there how to actually um, connect your Airtable and your software account. So if you've missed that, check back to part two and then pick, up, pick back up here with us. So um, it's a similar process to what we did on the actual main guides list page. I now click on the block that I want to edit. I now tell it which base that it's pulling the information from. And again, it's, um, it's going to be my guides base. Okay, and now what I do is I tell it what to show for each of these different um, holding places that they have. So the heading one, I'm going to want that to be the post title. Now, how is it going to know which post title to show? Well, software automatically um, will ensure that it will only show the post title for the actual post that the user clicked on from the guides page. So this particular page is a dynamic page. It effectively shows the information based on what the user has clicked into, and it'll only show the information for that particular uh, post or that particular tool or that particular resource that the user has clicked on the list page. So that's, I'm trying to get across what the logic is between a list page versus a list details page. This is a list details page, it shows more detail relating to one record that a user has clicked on from your list page okay so post title there it's using the how to create a web page in less than 10 minutes using software now obviously i'm probably gonna to have to change that to less than 45 minutes and i'm actually uh, running over on my time here by just talking about these things okay so let's get through this quickly so then obviously um the text field i want this to be my blurb so that's going to show up below the, the title there that looks quite good image gallery obviously it's going to be your image field from your Airtable base. So I'll click image and it shows up my image that I have in Airtable for this. Tags, um, this is going to be uh, basically your, your, your categorizations that you have for whatever the particular item that it is that you're showing. For me, it's tools. 
So you'll see here it shows tags down below the image, Airtable and software, the only two that I've set up for the purpose of this tutorial. Obviously, um, when I have this completed, it'll have every single tool um, and on each blog post, it'll just show the relevant tools that are relevant to that particular uh, article. So then the rich text is actually going to be the article itself. You now the article itself didn't appear on the list page. I only want the article to present when the user actually clicks into that particular post and um, because it would be too much to show on your summary list page. So if I go here and I've got my blog article here and I've done out a dummy um, a dummy article uh, for, for the time being um, to show uh, what this looks like. So it's bringing in my article and it's all pulling, all of this information is pulling from here. So there's my post title. Um, what else do I have? There's the image that it's pulling in. There's the blurb that goes just below the title. Um, as I mentioned in part two, I'll do a future tutorial, a, a more advanced tutorial about how to build uh, automation functionality into this base so that when I click tick here, it effectively posts my blog to my web page through software. Um, it then creates a, a Instagram post automatically with the blurb over the post. Uh, just something like that, which is perfectly formatted for Instagram. It then posts it to Instagram. It does the same for Facebook. It does the same for LinkedIn. It also does all of my search engine optimization automatically over here so that uh, this page will hopefully over time rank in Google and in other search engines. Anyway, uh, we'll do a future tutorial dedicated to that level of automation and already you can probably see um, I suppose the benefits of building a web page this way versus more traditional ways, just with the level of automation and the efficiencies that the whole no code uh, universe can bring uh, through the use of Airtable as your sort of your, your, your database or your beating heart of your no code ecosystem. Okay, so that's probably enough on that and um, it's brought that in and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit publish again and you'll see how this works now when I go to my web page. I have probably a couple of minutes left to show you everything. I probably no need to show you the actual tools end of things which I had intended on from the beginning because it's effectively a repeat of every step that I've just shown you there on the guides thing except that I will be using this base as the linking thing um, in, in software as opposed to my guides base and you can do that as many times as you like with as many different gatherings of, of data as you would like to present on your web page. Okay, so I won't need to show you that, um, but what I will show you is what our finished um, what our finished uh, product looks like. I might show you quickly the contact page. So if we come into guides here, it's going to show me there are three guides, and if you click into any of them, so we already saw that one in the in the preview in the visual editor. So say we click on this one. It should show me that post, which it does. And again, we only had to build this page once. And then if I go back and if I click on the how to create web page in less than 10 minutes or less than 45 minutes, as is the case here, it shows me that web page. And similarly, if I go into my how to automate your bookkeeping using Airtable, it'll show me that page, which I currently don't have a post done out for that, but that is going to be my one of my future um, tutorials, one of my future videos. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, please click subscribe below and please, please like my video, it would be much appreciated. Okay, so I'll go back, that's effectively um, the functionality we've built there and you can imagine what you can do for your own business using this type of a setup okay so if we quickly build out a contact page so if we go to our pages again if we go to contact and the only thing i'm going to add in here is a form block so we go form and if we go this one let's get in touch and the only thing i need to do really here is to program the submit button so that it sends an email to me and as i mentioned in part one and part two if you actually integrate with your Airtable base and um, you can do that through zapier or through integromat and um, suddenly you can be compiling any inquiries or any information that users submit through your web page um, in an Airtable base and that's obviously the starting point because if you have automations built into your base such as you might have an autoresponder email that goes out you might have an autoresponder text that goes out you might tell it that it starts a workflow whereby it creates um, a, a contract or a terms of business or a letter of engagement using details that the user has populated and it automatically produce that document and send it to the user 
browser. So you can start to see why building your web page and every process really through the use of Airtable and your no-code tools, it's all eventually going to marry up together and you're suddenly going to create a very efficient, uh, heavily automated um, overlapping uh, process that is only going to keep building on itself and improving over time. So if that sounds of interest to you, we've got an e-learning course um, coming up on our website, nocode.ie. Um, we're taking, uh, we're, we're registering interest at the moment. Uh, we plan to launch our course later this year and it'll be accompanied by a community so that um, fellow no code builders um, can 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 gather together and share their learning experiences and give their use cases and everything else as they work through the e learning course okay so if that sounds of interest to you please don't be afraid to subscribe to our channel i probably already asked you to do that sorry this is my third video shooting in a row and i'm actually going horse okay well look that is that i'll click publish in the final part of this series, part four, I'm going to show you some of the finer details in terms of how to uh, how to add a custom domain so that it doesn't come up as one of these softer domains. And in the free plan, you get one free custom domain. So that's covered under your free free plan. I'm also going to show you how to do things like see here the way this um, icon up here is, is a generic favicon they're called. I'm going to show you how to update that so that it looks more professional, it's more in keeping with your brand. Um, and I'll show you a few other tips and tricks. So if that's of interest to you, um, I will see you in part four. Thanks.